against the dollar. So strength that came through really from the middle of last week, continuing into the new week. Yeah, we saw uh, the European uh, Central Bank uh, uh, stabilize the situation in, in uh, as far as the peripheral countries are concerned, the so-called uh, uh, pigs or the Mediterranean countries. That brought a little, of, a little bit of stability to the system and based on the sheer supply of export dollars that we did see up there, the RAND came off and, and, and strengthened to sub-7 and, and eventually on Friday uh, below 690. Of course, we have seen that dollar recovering slightly this morning, but it really looks like a the, those jobs numbers bringing the, the U.S. economy back into perspective at this stage. Do you think we could see this weakening trend continue? Yeah, Stephen, I, I, I think from a, from a G7 perspective, what we, 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 you know, there's some interesting dynamics because the problems uh, in Europe haven't gone away and, and, and you know, they've attracted some attention this morning, particularly Spain, and we've seen the dollar uh, retrace some of its losses on the back of some of those concerns. But at the same time, an unemployment rate of 9.8% in the U.S. just goes to show exactly how far they've still got to go uh, to create jobs and, 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 and to bring the, the, the economy, uh, to, to stabilize that economy and to reduce the job losses. On the back of all of that, you know, between Europe and, and the U.S. at the moment, uh, we're seeing a lot of stimulus coming in. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if, if that stimulus flowed into emerging markets and, and uh, you know, uh, the RAND as a, as a proxy of that and, and drove the RAND to stronger levels. So really, we have stimulus coming out on both sides of the Atlantic at this stage. What does this say to the dollar-euro relationship going forward? Well, they both have their problems, you know. Uh, of course, the concern for, for Europe now is that one of those countries with, with massive debt problems defaults uh, or decides to go it alone, and that's going to remain a risk for Europe. And, and, we, and we've seen a lot of, uh, you know, the authorities speaking about the, the, the need to keep the euro together and, and, and the reasons that is there and the political implications of it. Uh, and, and hence, we've seen the bailout for Ireland to try and minimize the, the risk as far as that is concerned. So the euro will remain uh, in focus. But of course, uh, that doesn't mean the U.S. is without its own problems. You know, similar kind of deficit levels, budget deficit levels, uh, similar kind of fiscal stimulus going on. So it's going to be a continuous seesaw pattern. And countries and currencies by, that have uh, prudent fiscal policies uh, are going to benefit as a result. I see you looking at some of the forecasts for the dollar. We have JP Morgan saying that it could end 2011 at 145 against the euro. Do you think that's a plausible scenario? Yeah, Stephen, I think, you know, uh, uh, analytics uh, as far as cu currency markets are concerned are a very, very dangerous game simply because there's so many forces uh, that, that are at play and that do drive currency sentiment as, as such. But certainly uh, the U.S. has got a long way to go. Europe has got a long way to go to try and stabilize the situation. Uh, they, they're both uh, kind of uh, eking out some economic growth, but of course that's not feeding through into employment. And uh, we've got a long, long way to go. So to call the, you know, uh, the dollar level at 145 or the euros, you know, I saw similar reports talking about the euro at 110, uh, simply because of the issues that they've got. Very, very difficult to call, uh, simply because of all of these, uh, you know, these macro, uh, situ uh, macro forces uh, playing, it's playing themselves out. So it really could go either way at this stage, couldn't it? Absolutely, Stephen, yeah. Well, I'm just, just taking a look at South Africa. We're, we're getting some data out this week, which will actually show the, the financial position of South Africa at this stage. We've got golden forex numbers coming out tomorrow. But let's rather start with the quarterly bulletin out on Thursday. We're going to get a, a snapshot of that uh, current account deficit and how that's looking at this stage, and also of household consumption expenditure. What do you think we're, we're going to be seeing coming out of that quarterly bulletin? Well, I, you know, from a from a macro perspective, I think the quarterly bulletin will show that the, that the South African economy uh, is doing relatively well, albeit of a of a lowish base from last year. Uh, but we're not kind. We also not you know gaining the levels of growth that we require to to create jobs, and that of course is going to remain a, a concern. But one thing where we are streets ahead of of our developed nations peers is our, on the fiscal front. Our fiscus is looking very very good. Uh, I, I you know we, we keep seeing a revised numbers of, of, of upward numbers of tax collection uh, and and money supply remain, remains very very low there's not really that much inflationary pressure coming through uh, so from that perspective uh, you know on, on, on those basis is the rand is attractive uh, relative to his, to the to our G7 trading partners, uh, and I, I think the, the the quarterly bulletin will show that a slightly in, a slight increase in the in the um, current account deficit, but nothing to be concerned about. Uh, and in fact, we you know the, I think the market has seen very good export supply over the last couple of weeks. And of course, we had that current account deficit sitting at two and a half percent in the second quarter. The market looking for a figure just north of three percent. What's your expectation there, David? 
Yeah, I, I think it will come out somewhere around 3%, Stephen. Uh, I don't think it will have any implications for the currency. Still low by our historical standards in any case uh, and easily financeable at this point in time, particularly with the, with the inflows that we're seeing into the equity and bond market. Now, you mentioned some of the tax collections that we've seen coming through from, from the receiver of revenue. Of course, we have had the, the finance minister saying that tax overruns could be used to buy Forex. Getting those golden Forex numbers out tomorrow, do you think we're going to see any significant increase given the fact that we did have a pretty weak rand uh, for some parts of last month, so not really attractive for buying dollars? I, I think the, the, the picture is going to get a little bit more difficult to read, Stephen, because a lot of those numbers now land up in the, in, in the Treasury uh, and not necessarily in the reserve number that you see. So it's hard, it's hard to, to pinpoint exactly how many dollars they, they, you know, they, they, that the Reserve Bank has been accumulating. And also one must remember, you know, we, we, we also have some infrastructure development that needs to take place, service delivery. So I can't see them taking a whole whack of money and just putting it into the currency. That's a really, really dangerous game to play. But I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, growth in those numbers. Uh, there is, you know, I, I think the Reserve Bank activity continues as it has done for the last few months and years. In fact, they continue to lop off uh, any surplus in the, in the market to try to stabilize or to try to uh, minimize the effect of the, of the inflows that we are seeing but it's not as clear-cut as it used to be because a lot of that, those numbers now land up in the Treasury. Well, from here, where would you expect the rand to go? We're trading about 690 at this point. Uh, would you expect to see the strength uh, con continuing just given the, the excess liquidity you've talked about in the markets? Yeah, the, the one thing, a little bit of concern, Stephen, is that we are in a, you know, we're moving quickly into the holiday period in South Africa now, so the market's going to become less liquid. Uh, perhaps a lot of players will be scared of just, just by that fact that, that we are in a holiday mode here or entering into the holiday mode in South Africa. But I think 675 is certainly on the cards uh, in the not too distant future, all things being equal, if we, you know, given the, if we don't see any major shocks coming out of Europe or the US, I think 675 is on the cards. The major risk to that scenario, of course, is if the equity markets take fright uh, and, and, and that is a possibility, then we'll see some risk aversion creeping in. But for now, all things being equal, I wouldn't be surprised to see some more strength creeping into the RAND.